Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Now, if you saw the very last video, you would have seen we made our very own bowl and then we made a silicone mold of that bowl, a very unique and individual way of making your very own unique mold. And this is the mold that we were left with. It's time to fill it up. Now, the reason I am making this specific bowl, I'll link the video here if you missed it, but I am doing a bedroom makeover. Now I have mentioned in the last video or two, I have a brand new channel coming in September, all about home and DIY and makeovers and all of that jazz and lifestyle, like I have a life. <laughs> I am gonna be using a Jesmonite AC100 in this video. The bottle I just showed you is actually from Resonate. Someone sent me that, they're not using it anymore. I've never tried their Jesmonite, but I don't know if it's the same. But I'm gonna be using Jesmonite AC100 that I got from Polysil a long while back. First things first, we're going to Razzo. So I'm gonna prep my area and I'm actually using a plastic apron from Let's Resin just to lay down and give me that plastic surface. Now, Jesmonite is measurable by weight one to 2.5. So I'm actually measuring out 250 grams of Jesmonite AC100 powder to 100 grams of Jesmonite AC100 liquid. Again, it's a one to 2.5 consistency. I've had a lot of questions lately on the differences between between Jesmonite and the Eco Pores that you've seen me using. There's tons of differences, guys. There really, really is. Jesmonite is way thicker than all of the Eco Pores probably combined. Jesmonite AC100 is like a thick double cream consistency. It has a shorter shelf life, a shorter work time. So time is against you, but it's okay. <laughs> I thoroughly still love Jesmonite AC100 and that is why I am making it with Jesmonite because I want to make terrazzo. It's been a while, it's been a while. So I've mixed up my one to 2.5, not much, and I'm actually putting it into three separate cups. The reason for this is because I want three different colors. Now, again, how you make your Jesmonite terrazzo or whatever it is you're doing is entirely up to you, but I know that my new bedroom scheme is going to be that mocha latte with a dark green wall and oh my gosh I'm so obsessed like I said I have a brand new channel coming around the September autumn time and I've already filmed a few videos that are ready to go and that includes paneling my own bedroom wall and how I went about it start to finish kind of thing and guys Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to launch this channel. I've already got like 500 subscribers on my brand new channel and there's not even any video up yet. So if you want to hit that subscribe button, please do. And maybe I can launch my new channel when I've already reached a thousand subscribers. Is that crazy? Because I've just hit 500 subscribers in the space of just days like you guys are incredible so as you saw on screen i've used three completely different greens now these colors are from homeware design co they are my absolute go-to colors i swear by them and so many of you also adore homeware like when i'm on the jesmonite facebook groups if anyone mentions colors straight away everyone's like homeware design homeware design <laughs> So I'm really, really happy that you guys are all loving them as well because they are, they are amazing. I've just picked three of the greens available. There are so many greens in the range, but I've gone with these three greens because I think they're going to complement that latte so, so much. Now for your terrazzo, you just want to empty your cups down onto your surface. You want a plastic surface. I could have done it straight on the silicon mat, but I didn't want the cleanup. This is so much easier. Plastic polyurethane is so, so much easier to clean up after making jesmonite terrazzo. And again, just pour it down onto your surface. Use your stick to spread it. Spread it as thinly or as thickly as you want. Honestly, I would say go thin because breaking it up is so much easier when it's quite thin. So no deeper than a millimeter. If you have quite thick layers, 
the breaking up process is way harder, let me tell you. And because all of these colors kind of complement each other, I'm okay that they're blending. I'm okay that they're being layered over one another. But if you're going for something completely different with completely contrasting colors, then definitely keep them separate on your mat. Don't allow them to blend. This is around 40 minutes later and it is time to peel all of this jesmonite up from my mat from my mat, from, from my plastic and start to break it up. This is the most fun. There's two parts to just, there's two parts to terrazzo. Okay. There's the fun side, the, the, the smushing of the chips, you know, terrazzo is basically all of these little chips. So we're creating this using the AC 100. This is the fun part. The, the part that, <laughs> the part that breaks my soul <laughs> is the sanding. Do not do terrazzo if you don't like sanding because the sanding is real. There's no way around it. Yes, you could use electrical tools, but guys, look at these. I love them. I have done so much terrazzo on my channel before, but I will say this is probably my favorite project that I've ever done. Don't quite know why. Maybe it's because I'm making it for my very own bedroom and I've, I had this color scheme in my mind and I knew what I wanted to do with it. But here it all is. Now you can smush it up as small as you want or you can leave big chunky chunks. I want my terrazzo relatively small in size and then I'm just transferring it into this plastic tub. This is just gonna house it all until I'm ready to add it into my main bowl of Jesmonite AC100. Now, next up, we're gonna make another batch of Jesmonite. Again, I'm just going for around the 100 mark. One, I think I poured 110, 113, something, yeah, there it is, 113 in the liquid and then multiply that times 2.5 to get your powder content. And then it's just a case of slowly adding your powder in whilst whisking. Now, before you pour into your bowl, it's so important to be able to jiggle your bowl. You need to be able to move your vessel because Jesmonite and Terrazzo especially needs a lot, a lot, a lot of movement. A lot of tapping, bashing, whacking, lifting, dropping, all of that. So you saw me there just put some paper on top of a wooden board and that's gonna enable me to do all of that shimmying and a shaking. Now, it was at this point, I was mixing it up thinking, that looks like the cucumber dip. <laughs> <laughs> is it the cucumber dip and it was the yeah it was here I realized I'd forgotten to add the latte <laughs> so yeah don't be like me anyway it was fine you can add this base color at any stage honestly it's still worked a dream just make sure that all of your terrazzo chips are completely and utterly coated in that main jesmonite mixture that's gonna just ensure that everything is is as it should be. Now, I'm using my spatula here, you can see, I'm just scooping out a bit and I'm actually shoving it down because I know I can. I know this is kind of the, this is the freedom of Jesmonite. You can just get your spatula, shove it down into those walls just to make sure that you're not gonna get any huge holy chunks when it comes to demold. And this is where I talk about tapping. I did a lot, a lot, a lot of tapping. I actually lifted the mold off and dropped it down at least 10 times just to knock all of the air out from around those chips. Terrazzo does tend to build up a lot of air around the chips. And again, I've done a video on how to fix Jesmonite Terrazzo, so do check that out if you're interested, but I'm probably not gonna do much in this video. Okay, demold. I was worried because if you watched the last video, I did struggle to demold my resin from this mold there was a real big suction on there but with the jesmonite it just popped out it literally just popped out it was so so easy and i was so happy because i knew i could just use this mold over and over and over again this is pretty much what jesmonite terrazzo looks like when you first take it out of the mold now one tip i will say is pack your chips in i've seen so many people do jesmonite terrazzo with just not enough chips it's almost like you need more chips than you do jesmonite mixture. I hope that makes sense. Okay, next stage, my favorite thing in the world is sanding. I hate it. I've actually purchased a brand new set of wet dry sandpaper. When we sand terrazzo, we really want to do it wet. It's so much easier. Start off low. I'm starting with an 80 grit. This is a brutal, 
brutal grit. This is going to get the surface off so much quicker than if I started with a higher grit. So I'm going to work up from 80 grit up to 180, up to 400, and then to get a super smooth, smooth, smooth finish, we're going to finish on 1200. Here's the thing. Do not embark on Jesmonite Terrazzo if you hate sanding. I am not a lover of sanding, I must admit, but I love the results. That's the thing. That's what draws me back. That's what keeps me going. Now, 80 grit. The reason I'm starting so low is to save time long term. With just a few strokes of the 80 grit, we are already seeing those terrazzo chips come through. They're already being exposed. This is with the 80 grit. Now, if you don't know your grits, the lower the grit, the, the, the harder it is, the more it hurts. <laughs> Think about it like that way. If you accidentally catch your skin, the lower the grit, the more it hurts. The higher the grit, the smoother the finish. Um, but here we are just after a few rubs with the 80 grit. It's already bringing out all of those incredible chips. Now, I do have a bowl of water on my table here. In an ideal world, I would be sanding this in the bucket in my bath. Now, I've also done a video on how I clean up after Jesmonite, what I do with that water because Jesmonite sets underwater, so I don't just pour it down the bath. I have a system, a whole system to make sure that our drains don't get blocked. And uh, yeah, here we are. Anyway, this is just the 80 grit. Now, look at this. Look at all of these scratches. The 80 grit is not only going to expose your terrazzo chips in a super fast, speedy time, it's gonna scratch the surface up beyond ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> so there is a downside to using a lower grit. You could go straight in with a higher grit and spend hours sanding to make sure you get no scratches. But I'm too lazy for that. So I go in with the 80. Look at these scratches. I have dented the life out of this bowl. What happens next is we go up a grit. Not just one grit. I'm jumping. I'm jumping way ahead. I'm jumping way ahead to 180. 180 grit is still a great grit. It's still a really deep grit. It's going to get right in there. What it's going to do is expose even more of those terrazzo chips whilst taking down some of those scratches. So it's going to actually sand out some of those scratches, not all, because it is a higher grit. So here you see it's exposed more terrazzo, but it's also taken away it's sanded down some of those harsh, you know, scratches that we got with the 80. Now, the trick is to just keep going up a grit. I'm jumping well ahead in my grits. I'm not going through the grits, what they would say going through the grits. I'm not working through. I'm jumping up. <laughs> I'm jumping right up to 400. And the trick is to keep adding water, add water, add water, sand, add more water, sand, add more water. Now, this is the result after just a few sweeps of the 400. Those scratches are almost completely invisible at this point. But it's been less work to get there because I started on the 80. So it really is, it's like getting the boys in, you know, like getting the heavies, <laughs> the heavyweights. You've got to get the heavyweights in there to get most of the surface off before you can really think about the finish. Otherwise, I just feel like this is just, oh, just going to go a little bit crazy out here trying to get this finish using high grits only. Um, I just feel like it's just not worth it. It's not worth the struggle. Get in there. Get in there with the brutals, with the 80 or even the 60. I actually probably wouldn't go to 60. I feel like the 60, you could carve your name. <laughs> the 60, you could literally like write something in the in the Jesmonite. But yeah, get right in there. Not forgetting the inside. So again, I'm going straight into the inside with that 80 grit onto the bottom to again, expose as many of those chips as I want before I move up a grit. Again, adding water as you go. So, you know, if you feel like it's getting gloopy because it does, it gets really thick and muddy, add more water, sand again, rinse it off, add more water. This is why I generally do it in a bowl or in a bucket so that we can then dispose of that water properly afterwards. This is what it's looking like after a full on 
80 grit sand we have got chunks out the side i'm not going to fix them but i do have a video on it i'll link it below loads of scratches loads of marks absolutely tons this is what it's looking like after the one 200 one 200 who am i 1200 grit 1200 grit this is what it's looking like so much smoother so tactile i absolutely love it this is fully done now fully finished i'm gonna leave it to air to thoroughly dry out overnight on this cake rack again this is all linked below in the jesmonite section i love these racks they are stand you can stack them so i actually had them like stacked five deep at one point and this is next day it has pretty much completely dried out it is time to seal it but let me show you the weight this is already so heavy at 508 grams that's heavy guys we're gonna seal we're gonna seal with homeware designs very own handmade coconut oil and soy wax seal designed for eco resins plaster decor jesmonite you name it that's what it's used for i rarely use wax but again homeware designs sent me this back when they sent me all of their colors and it really is a lovely product to use it doesn't leave all of the streaks that the acrylic kind of liquid sealer leaves even though I, I buff them out as well so yeah it's been a while since I've used the wax and I just thought this is a lovely product you know it, it leaves a lovely finish it's actually really tactile and lovely smells amazing to work with so I'm just using a sponge and we are going full on Mr Miyagi <laughs> okay we are going full on Karate Kid we are waxing off waxing on waxing off I don't know if that's how you're meant to use this, but that is exactly what I did here. I'm going in circular motions all the way around the edges of my bowl using this small sponge. And again, I'm not doing the bottom because I'm actually going to put a cork um, self-adhesive base on the bottom. So I'm leaving the wax off of the bottom. I don't know if that's going to interfere with my sticky cork. So yeah, I'm just doing the rim. I'm doing all of the insides, the nooks, the crannies, the, the 90 degree inside edge. All of the walls are getting a really generous coat of this wax and it's already making the colors pop more. It's making it look so fresh and I, I just love it. It was so easy to use. This is me now. I've flipped the sponge around so now I'm using the other side of the sponge to wax off again I don't know if this is how you use sealing wax but this is how I'm using it and it's worked out pretty nice I absolutely love the bowl it is gonna work in my new bedroom like you wouldn't believe it's now time to add the cork base and for this i'm just drawing around the resin bowl that we made in the previous video so if you missed that again go watch it we made our very own resin bowl in a very unique kind of way and because i have that i'm drawing around that to create my cork base when i cut this out i'm actually cutting about two mil inside that pen line so that it comes nicely within the base of my bowl and then i'm just peeling a little bit of that paper back to get it in position before pressing it down knowing that i'm happy it's all pretty much central and then once i've pressed it down i pull the rest of the paper out from underneath and of course i'm not going to stop there because if one day i'm over this bowl and i don't want it anymore and i think i could sell that maybe i could sell that i'm actually gonna stamp my logo on the bottom now if you've been with me a while you'll know that i got my own branded logo stamps i now have Four, I think Moray made me Moray Lothian Woodworks. He's regularly in my chat. He made me my own, or purchased, not sponsored. Um, he made my own um, logo stamps for me. I have a nice little round one that could have worked on here, but this one here is the rectangular. I absolutely love the design of this one. And I'm using the Stays On ink. This is a permanent ink, works beautifully with cork. Trust me, you guys recommended this to me because I was losing my mind. All of the inks I tried were just wet wet for days <laughs> this one dries within seconds perfect for cork love it absolutely love it that is my bowl finished the taupe color on this the, the latte is gonna match my walls like unbelievably so and all of those green terrazzo chips will also work with the paint colors and the scheme that i'm going in the room i can't wait i can't wait so yes we've made this using cookie cutters 
minutes. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> We've used this bowl using cookie cutters. So again, if you missed the original video, I'll link it here or below. Everything you need to make this will be down below. I did get my Jesmonite from Polysil, so that necessarily won't be linked, but definitely check out Polysil um, for that. Um, and yeah, I hope you loved it. I hope you like the mold. I hope you guys go out of your comfort zone and make a mold of your own. Like find something you can mold, make a mold of it because this is unique. Nobody else has got this bowl on the planet. This shape, size, dimensions, widths, chunkiness. Nobody else has got this because I made this from scratch. So you guys go ahead Grab your cookie cutters and make your own bowl from scratch because it's going to be unique. And I love it. Thank you so, so much if you are still here. This is a pretty long video. We're already at 20 minutes. I appreciate you all massively. And I'm going to be back on, um, I don't even know what day it is. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm going to be back in the next video. Let's just say that. With something I bought from Maker Central, I'm going to be using it. And it's exciting and it's amazing. Okay, see you then. Bye.